Uh, the first of all, I'd like to say uh, thanks DCO and uh, the meeting organizer for inviting me here, so it is very uh, honor to me. And uh, the, I'd like to start with, again, the uh, three decades ago of the DCO deep life communities. Uh, as Mitch mentioned yesterday, so we would like to determine the processes, limits, and interaction between deep life and uh, carbon cycling. And uh, in order to meet these important goals, uh, that we use uh, the opportunity through the scientific ocean drawings. The 2010, uh, the I was uh, on board the uh, US Dream Vessel Georgia's resolution to explore the South Pacific Yale, uh, Subsea for Life, and the 2012, the, the Chikyu, the Japanese Dream Vessel, the, uh, the uh, IODP Expedition 67 to explore the deep Corbett biosphere of Shimokita. And then the 2006 again, uh, the IODP Expedition C70, uh, which aims to explore the temperature limits of the deep biosphere of Muroto in the Nankai Trough. So obviously the DCO uh, scientists uh, have been very much involved in those projects and uh, contribute to the lot. Uh, therefore, uh, the, our understanding of the deep South Sea for life and the biosphere has massively expanded uh, over the last decade. And uh, the, I like to um, share some highlights from those expeditions. Uh, again, the 2010, the IODP expedition C29 explored the wild oligotrophic ocean on the, uh, in the world, the South Pacific Shale. And uh, so we uh, explored on here, the seven, we drilled seven sites in the South Pacific Shale and confirmed the presence of dissolved oxygen in pore water in the sediment uh, from the seafloor down to the basement. And uh, the Don the, uh, the estimated that the up to 37% uh, of the global ocean sediment is completely aerobic. Uh, therefore, the, our, uh, the, the, the deep uh, subsea for sedimentary biosphere mainly constitute of aerobic and anaerobic biosphere. And uh, we also confirm the occurrence of micro aerobic microbial community in those uh, oxic sediment. So from the seafloor down to the basement, uh, 10 to the third to 10 to the fourth cells per cubic centimeter uh, of sediment. Uh, the communities are widely uh, distributed uh, in those environment. Uh, therefore, uh, we think uh, there is uh, uh, no limits to microbial life in the South Pacific Shire sediment. Uh, in, indicating that the deep biosphere limits much go deep uh, within the underlying uh, ocean crust. Then, uh, so we also uh, discover uh, numerous iron manganese microparticles in those oxic sediments. Uh, the, the particle size is roughly uh, 10 to, um, 10 to uh, 20 microns. Uh, here. Uh, the here, the ten, 10 to 20 microns, and uh, we estimated the number of these particles up to 8.8 .8 times 10 to the 28 microparticles, accounting for up to 7.62 teraton of manganese uh, beneath the ocean floor. So this manganese budget is two order magnitude higher than the uh, manganese budget on the sea floor nodule, so that the, the budget is big. Then in 2012, uh, using the using the, the Chikyu's laser system, so we explore the deep Corbett biosphere of Shimokita Peninsula of Japan, and uh, that we extended the previous uh, record of scientific ocean drilling down to 2.5 kilometers, and uh, confirmed that the deep biosphere extends down to the 2.5 kilometer uh, below the sea floor, and uh, the cell concentration sharply dropped at around 1.2 to 1.5 kilometer beneath the ocean floor, but we see some uh, the abundant cells uh, within the core bed, uh, mainly because of the availability of energy in, those, uh, in the core bed environment. So geochemical data, so including the, the clump isotope of methane, uh, suggests that the, the C, uh, CO2 reducing the hydrogenotrophic methanogenesis are going on uh, near the in situ environment. Therefore, the, we think the, the functioning of microbial uh, community may play a very important role in carbon cycling, even in 2.2 uh, kilometer deep sub C4. And the, 
uh, the using uh, stable isotope probing the nanoscale secondary ion mass spectrometer metri and SIP nanosims technique. Uh, so we also confirmed the two kilometer deep uh, microbial community slowly consumes the methyl compounds such as uh, methanol or methylamine. And uh, the, we calculated the turnover rates of, uh, based on uh, the atomic incorporation of deuterium and the 15N into the cell biomers. Uh, ranging, uh, ranged from the several months to over uh, 100 years, uh, even in uh, ex uh, laboratory incubation conditions. Uh, despite these uh, slow processes, uh, we also demonstrated that the, the two kilometer, uh, 20 million year old uh, coal bed sample, uh, the, mi the microbial communities are generally cultivable if we use, uh, uh, when, when, we, when we use the uh, the anaerobic continuous flow bioreactor systems. So after several months of operation of these uh, bioreactor systems, uh, the deeply buried microbes have started reviving like zombie, uh, inc uh, including the hydrogen trophic methanogens. And I think, in my opinion, that this enrichment culture provides us a wonderful opportunity to do some downstream analysis for including some uncultivated microorganisms in the deep biosphere. And uh, the not only bacteria and archaea, uh, but also some uh, eukaryotes uh, were uh, uh, cultivated from 20 million year old coal bed. Uh, like uh, the diverse forest of uh, fungi uh, we could found, and, but it, it makes sense because the 20 million years ago, the lignite coal beds environment at the forest and uh, wetland environment. Then, uh, the in, uh, 2016, uh, with the best support from DCO, so we made an IODP expedition 370 T limits of the deep biosphere of Muroto uh, in the Nankaitwa prot-thrust prot zone. And um, the here you see uh, the, the shallow mesophilics, the cold living microorganisms, uh, the very sensitive to the temperature, the population is uh, decreased with steps uh, increase, decrease with increasing temperature and uh, almost the uh, detection limit at around 50 to 55 degrees C. Yeah. But uh, the below that, we see some cells around here and there, but also uh, the, I'd like to uh, point out here that uh, we see some nice peak of endospore around here and here at around the SMTZ. And uh, below the decomet, uh, also interestingly, that we see the lifeless zone, that we don't see the, any reliable biosignatures around here, the, below the decomet, uh, where we see the mechanically weak and uh, overpressure zone. But uh, uh, also, uh, below this lifeless zone, surprisingly, we see some cell proliferation here, and also some other geochemical data shows that see some life, uh, maybe around here, uh, even at around uh, one, uh, 120 degrees C, which is amazing. And, uh, right, uh, so not only this, uh, the expedition-based fi findings, uh, we are going to try to figure out the nature of the global subsea for uh, microbial communities. Uh, using uh, 300 samples obtained from 40 different sites, we extracted DNA and uh, quantified the archaea bacteria abundance and show that the, the archaea cells constitute 37.3% of the total microbial cells corresponding to 1.1 times 10 to the 29 cells on Earth. Also, that we sequenced the DNA uh, and that we estimated the total number of microbial species as amplicon consequence variance. In this case, uh, the 4.0 times 10 to, the, uh, 10 to the fourth, which is um, comparable to the diversity found in energy-rich environment on Earth's surface, like a paddy field or seawater environment. And so, that's the, it is as a, as a, in the deep biosphere. Uh, there is a very, you know, the diverse uh, microbial community widespread. Then, uh, moreover, we extracted the, the dipicronic acid, DPA, uh, which is a biomarker of permacutous endospores. And uh, the, the Bremen team uh, calculated the number of endospores in the deep subsea floor sediment, the 2.5 times 10 to the 28 to uh, 10, 10 to the 29 endospores. 
in the uppermost kilometer of sediment. So this number corresponds to 4.6 to 36 petagram carbon. But uh, this number is important uh, because uh, the carbon budget of vegetative cells is roughly four petagrams. So that's the, the, the we think the uh, such an endospore um, massively contribute to the carbon bio, uh, carbon budget in the deep biosphere. Then, uh, uh, what are the next? Uh, there are many unsolved, uh, broad, uh, fundamental uh, questions. Uh, for example, uh, how did life emerge and evolve on Earth? And why does plate tectonics operate on Earth? And what lies beneath the deep biosphere and what life ocean on Earth will be in the future? Uh, so in, in order to address these important questions, uh, we think uh, that exploring the mantle is key. Uh, the, the reason is very simple. The Earth is so unique planet. Uh, why unique? Uh, because it has diverse life minerals, uh, liquid, and liquid water on the planetary surface. So in fact, we are living a very thin layer uh, of this planet. But I think uh, we need to re recognize again here that the, 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 the Earth uh, massively constituted of mantle. The 83 volume percent, 67 weight percent of the whole earth constituted of mantle, but uh, we have never seen pristine mantle uh, beneath the ocean floor, uh, which is uh, ocean, beneath the ocean floor, oceanic crust, uh, which is a problem, I think, that so we should do that, in my opinion. So the Chiku was built in 2005 uh, to explore the um, mantle beneath the uh, oceanic crust uh, in, in their mind at the time. And uh, the, after 15 years uh, since these uh, initial constructions, uh, the many technological development, uh, like the drilling technology, analytical technology, I think it can be applicable for now. And uh, of course, uh, such an um, opportunity uh, will provide as a wonderful opportunity uh, for young science to meet together and do multidisciplinary international research, which is great. And we have already seen the very interesting uh, mantle life uh, interactions, uh, some feature uh, from the C4 investigations, like for example, uh, not C4, this is a serpentinization site, that's the Cedars, the Californian site, that the, we see some unusual microorganisms um, attached on uh, the automatic uh, lock particles, a pe a peridotide or something. Uh, and uh, this is a very important discovery, I would say. And also, the, uh, as, uh, yesterday, uh, uh, so it has been mentioned that see the abiotically produced only compound attract in uh, you know, fluid inclusion in the gabbro and uh, maybe in the uh, mantle drill uh, rocks as well. So how uh, we can understand for the future, uh, we think the ocean, earth, observatory, and the in situ experiment experimentation will be a key. Uh, we have uh, the, some nice technology to make an observatory uh, through the borehole. And I think uh, if we establish a mantle observatory somewhere in the Pacific Ocean, or uh, the data from the mantle um, can be integrated into other observatory data from Earth, universe, earthquake, tsunami, uh, marine plastic, or even ge geochemistry stuff, and uh, CO2 atmosphere, uh, biodiversity, and even geoneutrinos from the mantle. Then uh, I think so in the future, so maybe uh, it will be the first Earth data installation from the mantle to the universe. So I'd like to st stop uh, my talk. And uh, the, again, lastly, I'd like to say thanks to the DCO. And uh, the, I, uh, we, we would like to uh, you know, keep working on the uh, deep carbon science in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a fascinating talk. We have time for one quick question. If we don't have any questions, I actually have one very quick question. When you find yes. life beneath the lifeless zone, is the assumption that those cells have evected there through the lifeless zone? Or you know, did they get there by some other mechanism? Uh, the, I don't know, the, of course, the energy, uh, the, the energy availability is a key uh, to s support life, but uh, also the, we, we need to think about the, what is life. So, yeah.
the, on Earth, and then the, maybe it's such information will be very Im important to search for life, uh, you know, the extraterrestrial life or some other process. Thank you very much.